My name is Dave, I'm one of the leaders of the church if you don't know me, and uh, I want to share something really brief and simple this evening as I was praying about what, what God might want to say into our time together, what kinds of things. There was a, I was reminded and really felt drawn to a, to a really simple part of the story that's found in the Bible, uh, which is a beautiful picture of what it is that God is like, what it is that he does, the way that he treats us and behaves towards us. I love the Bible, and the Bible, the central figure of the Bible is about Jesus, but the strange thing is my Bible has 1,778 pages in it, and the word Jesus isn't found until page 1,381, so what's going on for the first 1,380 pages of the Bible that haven't even got to the central figure yet? What's happening during all of that time? Well, of course, the Old Testament, that story is of God and working and relating to his people and all kinds of different stories of what he's doing. And all of it, in one way or another, is preparing the world and preparing his people so that when Jesus would come, they might recognize him and go, yes, that's God because we know what God is like. That's who he is. That's what he's like. We, we hear these stories that are, that are setting the stage, that are preparing the way. Floss reminded us of one earlier on, the story of the Passover, when the people remembered God mightily rescuing them from slavery in Egypt. It's a picture of the way that Jesus would rescue us mightily from slavery to sin, from slavery to all things that are not from God. And so it's a picture of something that was going to come. But the, the story that I want to remind us of is from right early on in the Bible. The first three chapters of Genesis. And it's really the first picture we get of the good news, of the gospel, of what it is that God would do. And it's right there at the first moment that it's needed. When the world starts to fall apart, we get this little glimpse, this little picture. We're familiar, I'm sure, with the story of Adam and Eve and uh, the fruit. And, uh, and you can eat from any tree in the garden, but not from this one. And they do. And the serpent comes and deceives them. And then Eve eats. And then Adam and Eve eats. And then God comes. And there's... There's, there's judgment and there's punishment and they're taken out of the garden and it's this, this sad story. It's a sad story of sin, of wrongdoing entering the world. But right in the middle of it, there's a bit which can sometimes be overlooked, partly because it's a bit weird and strange and because it makes us have to say words out loud that we feel uncomfortable with. But also because it's sort of interwoven so much with the rest of it that it feels like the big story that's going on. Because this is the last description we get in the Bible of a perfect world. We've had the world made and it was good and then people are made and it's very good. And we get all of these de de depictions of Adam and Eve being made and it's beautiful and it's good. This is the final description of what a perfect world looks like. Adam and Eve, Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Like I said, we have to say words out loud that we, loud, that we feel uncomfortable with, like naked. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. I'm looking around and I'm seeing everyone clothed this evening. <laughs> if I were to ask you, which I will not, to take off your clothes right now, you wouldn't do it. You would rightly tell me, no, you'd feel uncomfortable. We like to be clothed. We don't like to be exposed. We don't like to be naked and seen by people, unless they are people with whom we are incredibly close and intimate, because we don't feel comfortable being exposed. That's not what the world was like when it was perfect. When Adam and Eve lived in this perfect world that hadn't been broken yet, they were naked and they felt no shame. They could be exposed to one another and they didn't mind because there was nothing that they had to hide. See, one of the results of spiritual brokenness and sin is that we feel we have things that we want to hide and so we hide them and so we're not open to being exposed. And so we hear about what they did. We hear about what they did when, because then we hear about the serpent and they eat the fruit and all that kind of thing happens. And then we read this. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realised they were naked. They'd always been naked before, but it had never been an issue for them. They realised they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. The, the first temptation is to hide. It's to cover up, it's to find something. And fig leaves, not a particularly good thing to cover up with, but it was near to hand. Let's hope they had good moisturiser. And they gathered fig leaves to cover themselves up so they weren't exposed anymore. Because there's that temptation to hide. And then God comes to them. And he asks what they've done. And they tell him what they've done. And it's not good. And he tells them that 
they're not going to be as close anymore and life is going to be harder because they've rejected him and so they've rejected things that are good and so instead life is going to be difficult and, and hard and that's what life that is separate from God because we've separated ourselves from God looks like. But here, right at the first moment we need it, we get the first picture of what God is like and what he's going to do in order to restore us. Because then, in the middle of all of that, we read this, just before they're put out of the garden, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Here's, some, here's two things God could have done. The first thing he could have done is gone, no, I made you naked, you're going to stay naked, take off the fig leaves, you're going to feel shame, you're going to feel naked, you're going to feel exposed, you're going to want to hide, you're not allowed. I want everyone to see your shame, I want you to know your shame, I want you to feel it, you deserve it. Stand there in your nakedness, feel exposed and feel bad, feel the guilt, feel the shame. God could have done that. He didn't. He doesn't want his people who, yes, have wronged, who, yes, have turned from him, who, yes, have made mistakes. He doesn't want them to feel condemned and feel convicted and feel all of those things just to make them feel ashamed. But he also doesn't say, keep on wearing the garments that you've made for yourself. Stay with the fig leaves. He doesn't say that. He says, I'm going to make something for you. And he makes something that's not made from fig leaves. He makes something that's made from, hum from animal skin. There's two differences there between what they were wearing and what God wanted them to wear. One of them is that it came from God and not from them. It was something that he gave them to wear, to cover up their nakedness, to cover up the shame that they now felt. He gave it to them instead of making them make it for themselves. They weren't covering themselves up. They weren't trying to pretend they were good enough. They weren't trying to hide. They weren't trying to do it for themselves. God gave them something. That's the first difference. The second difference is this. Something had to die. To cover yourselves in fig leaves, nothing has to die. To cover yourselves in animal skin, and this is synthetic rather than an actual sheepskin. But in order for this to be made, if it were real, something would have to die. Blood would have to be spilt in order to clothe them with that skin. It's the first picture that we get in the Bible of what it is that God would ultimately do. Because there come a time when people were no longer clothing themselves with sheepskin in the literal sense. But instead, God would send something else that would die in order that we might clothe, clothe ourselves with it. It's the first image of what God would do because Jesus would come and Jesus would die and his blood would be spilt for us so that we would no longer need to be naked and so that we would no longer need to be ashamed and so that we would no longer need to try and cover it up for ourselves. God would give us the clothes to wear. And so in the New Testament, we read these words. So in Christ, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptised into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. We read a few times in the New Testament of being clothed with Christ, that he is the skin we wear, that he is the thing that covers up all the things that we might feel we need to hide, that he covers up our shame, he covers up our guilt. Not covers up in a sense of just puts a mask over it, but he deals with it so that we can be Free, so that we're not anymore trying to scurry around and find things to cover ourselves up with. And so the thing I want to encourage us with this evening is that's what God is like. It's the first few pages of the Bible we see a picture of what God is like and he's still like that. He still doesn't want you when you make mistakes and when you fail and when you turn from him. He doesn't want you to stand there in your nakedness and shame and be exposed and be guilted and be condemned and be mocked and be laughed at. God doesn't have anything to do with that. He doesn't have time for that. He doesn't say, I made you naked and so stay naked. Stand there and be ashamed of yourself. Nor does he say, try and cover yourself up. Try and sort yourself out. Make yourself good enough. He says, I'm going to clothe you and I'm going to clothe you at the cost of my own son. That's what it's going to cost to clothe you with righteousness, with goodness. That's what God is like. And this evening, that's all I wanted to remind us of. To stop scurrying around and try and cover ourselves up and stop feeling exposed because before God, we don't need to be. He's clothed us. He's made us whole. He's made us free. He's made us good in his sight. And that's just something to hold on to, something to cling to, something to clothe ourselves with every day, deliberately and actively to say, I'm not going to clothe myself with the very best I can do. 
I'm going to close my, clothe myself with the very best that God has done. And that's his son, Jesus. And it's all I need.